Hey sexy people. If you're like me, your favorite YouTuber might have had a mental breakdown this week and can't give me life advice while she does her makeup. So <laughs> we're turning to Nana right now. But in all seriousness, I do think that advice from your peers is great. Um, you know, especially only when they've overcome, when we've overcome, you know, stuff that you're still trying to get through. But I do believe that it is important to take time and listen to what our elders, the people who have lived close to a century, have to say about navigating life's journeys and challenges and adventures and things like that. So that's what we're doing today. We're tapping into the wisdom that can only come with a ton of life experience and listening to Nana about what she has to say about living a life with no regrets. All right, stay tuned. Welcome back. All right, Tasha Caulfield here, writer, comedian, author of The Care and Feeding of Sex Symbols, here once again for us smart and sexy, pretty messes to help us feel more loved, secure, and on top of our world. Okay, so I never had a grandmother. Both of them passed away before, well, I, I guess I had them, but I never got to meet or talk to or touch or hear, <laughs> whatever. So yeah, grandmother was not around. Um, like daddy, no, <laughs> okay. All right, so, um, God. And my mother, who wasn't that steady of a presence, you know, wasn't really that available. So I always kind of looked to other women to hear what they had to say about navigating through life. After all, women learn how to be women by watching other women, right? And this advice was given to her grandson um, when she was diagnosed with terminal cancer on her 90th birthday. They sat in the hospital room together and she kind of just thumbed through the journal and shared some things, highlighted some things for him, which he shared with us, Mark Chernoff, um, in an article he titled The 19 Great Truths, um, you know, from his grandmother or something like that. And, you know, she passed away two weeks later, but this wisdom is living on. Her last entry went something like this. It went, I have seen and touched and danced and sang and climbed and loved and meditated on a lifetime spent living honestly. Should it all end tomorrow, I can positively say that it will have been with no regrets. I feel very fortunate to have walked 90 miles in my shoes. I really am lucky. I have lived a thousand times over. I memorized it because I want to be able to say these things, okay? So without further ado, let's dive into these truths, I like to call them life lessons, that will help us to live a life with no regrets. I'm going to break up these 19 to about five, uh, you know, five at a time over the next couple of weeks because I don't want to overwhelm you guys and I don't want to talk about, I don't want to do 19. That's a lot <laughs> in one city. <laughs> That's too many. All right. Okay. So here they are. Let's pull it out. <coughs> That's what he said. <laughs> All right. So the first life lesson is there are thousands of people who live their entire lives on the default settings, never realizing that they can customize everything. Don't settle for the default settings in life, she says. Find your loves, your talents, your passions, and embrace them. Don't hide behind other people's decisions. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Don't let others tell you what you want. Design your journey every step of the way. Nana is deep. All right. The life you create from doing something that moves you is far better than the life you get from sitting around wishing you were doing it. I love this one. I'm glad it's number one. I live by it. I breathe by it. You can customize everything. You don't have to do the whole, you know, school, then a job, then climb up a little bit, then get married, then have kids. You don't have to do the whole, I'm just gonna, you know, have this sort of monogamous relationship or I'm just going to have this polygamous relationship or I'm, you know, going to be just totally straight or totally gay. Like you can do whatever you want. Design your life 
to your sentiments, um, to your taste, to your own joys. I was look, listening to this Gary Vanderchuk or whatever this like guy who's a YouTuber uh, thing to, today, and he was talking about you know if you don't like Monday mornings, turn them into Saturday mornings. Like you can just maneuver it. Warren Buffett talks about not just saying like oh, okay, I'm going to um, you know s save up this. I'm going to really work hard. Then maybe one day I'll be able to do this or I'll be able to enjoy this or da da. He's like that's like waiting to have sex when you're old. Like you can focus on what brings you joy and craft a life around that. I love that advice. All right. Ooh, grandma got me hyped. So the second life lesson is the right journey is the ultimate destination. The most prolific and beneficial experience in life is not in actually achieving something you want, but in seeking it. It is the journey towards an endless horizon that matters. Oh gosh, this is deep. Nana was deep. Oh, that 20 year old YouTuber gonna be out of a job when she get back. <laughs> Goals and dreams that move forward as you chase them. It's all about meaningful pursuits, the moving and what you learn along the way. Truly the most important reason for moving from one place to another is to see what's in between. Oh, in between is where passions are realized, love is found, strength is gained, and priceless lifelong memories are made. Now, this is another one that I love. I'm not gonna talk about it too long, don't worry. We're gonna get to number three. But this is another one I love because I'm so big on the journey, you know, and I get a lot of crap for it. So you, if you follow some of these things, you can get a lot of crap for it. You're going to be going against the tide in most cases. You're going to, so you're going to have to experience loneliness a little bit and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I'm so focused on the journey in a culture that so f wants you to be focused on the destination. And while I do think that it's important to remember the thing that you, the things that you want, you know, that's more so to help you get through the tough times. And if you're doing it right, you're going to have way more good times than tough times because you're going to be savoring all of the meat that is making up your life. I don't even want to say that's in between. You can say it's in between goals, but it truly is just all your life. So savor it, brace it like that is that's what you should be prioritizing about making good, not making a good goal, making a good process, making a good journey. You know, Nana is good. All right. Number three, the willingness to do hard things opens great windows of opportunity. One of the most important abilities you can develop in life is the willingness to accept and grow through times of difficulty and discomfort because the best things in life are often hard to come by, at least initially. And if you shy away from difficulty and discomfort, you'll miss out entirely on them. Mastering a new skill is hard. Parenting is hard. Writing a book is hard. Building a business is hard. Staying healthy is hard. But all are amazing and worth every bit of the effort you can muster. Realize this now. If you get good at doing hard things, you can do almost anything you put your mind to. Ooh, so good, so good. Another one I love, I love this because, you know, we sometimes think that just because something is hard means that we shouldn't be doing it. You know, you get a lot of this, especially with like relationship advice or, you know, cert or whatever, I could say, career stuff, but a lot of times you give yourself a little bit more slack there. Like, oh, I guess it's supposed to be hard, but relationships were kind of keep being taught that, you know, it shouldn't be hard. And I, I do think that what's important to give up a lot of times is the struggle against what you want, like the resistance that you have to the process that is designed to challenge you and strengthen you in certain ways, your resistance, once you give that up, you, you know, that's an ease that is worth reaching for. Um, but as far as not embracing the challenge, I definitely think that, you know, 
spot on once you recognize like, okay, this is something that I want and it'll be worth it, then do it. Like once I said, this can get really tricky because especially since we talk a lot about relationships here, um, I don't want to suggest to anybody that if you are in something that is abusive or not healthy for you, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, whatever, that you should just be sticking it out. We're talking about things that actually are a part of your goals and your desires and your dreams, like what you envision. You did not envision an abusive relationship, like you didn't grow, hopefully. <laughs> well, hopefully you did it, but you know, like, you get what she's saying though. I don't need to over explain this, right? Right, all right. Life lesson number four, small incremental changes always change everything in the long run. The concept of taking it one step at a time might seem absurdly obvious, but at some point we all get caught up in the moment and find ourselves yearning for instant gratification. We want what we want and we want it now. And this yearning often tricks us into biting off more than we can chew. So remind yourself, you can't lift a thousand pounds all at once. You can easily lift one pound a thousand times. Tiny repeated efforts will get you there gradually. This one is great. You know, once again, this is all about the journey. And you know, that whole concept of you don't build a, you know, a whole wall and one day you do a brick by brick and that's how you ultimately get the wall. Like, this is great because it's once again reminding you to focus on the process and that every little thing you do, no matter how small, will help get you where you want to go. You don't, it doesn't have to be these grand things. And it, you know, even if, if you got everything you wanted right now, tomorrow, you probably couldn't handle it. You wouldn't have the, the, you know, strength of character or discipline or whatever it takes to really even handle all that stuff. So enjoy the little, the little, you know, parts you get by incrementally doing things like along the way and building up to the ultimate creation that you envision. Another great point, Nana, another great point. And the last one, the final one for the day, life lesson number five, no one wins a game of chess or the game of life only moving forward. Sometimes you have to move backward to put yourself in a position to win. Because sometimes when it feels like you're running into one dead end after another, it's actually a sign that you are not on the right path. Maybe you were meant to take a left back where you took a right. So that's, and that's perfectly fine. Life gradually teaches us that U-turns are allowed. So turn around when you must. There's a big difference between giving up and starting over in the right direction. I love this because progress isn't linear. Like, you know, sometimes you take two steps forward, sometimes one step back, sometimes five steps back. Sometimes, like she said, you go this way when you should have gone that way. You can move around and still win. Like, it's not about just one straight line. The joy is in the journey and we are zigging and zagging and figuring out how to do it. We're figuring out how to do it together. And fortunately, we have Nana here to help. So stick around over the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna dole out some more of her life lessons section by section and we are going to figure this out together all right like this video please and um, subscribe and notification bell and all that kind of stuff and until next time this is tasha caulfield encouraging you to stay sexy